So we all know about infrastructure as a service. We know about platform as a service. We know about software as a service. But there's a new one on the horizon that's not going to be on your Microsoft certifications exams. It's going to be AI slop as a service. As you can see, if you guys have any experience with Vibe coding, if you don't, you know, you'd go on to VS Code. I've got another video for this. A couple videos be behind this, I'll put the description in. You can basically put in a prompt with Augment AI or Claude, and you can automatically generate a website or an application. And if you have enough experience doing this, you'll start to notice that all of these websites that the AI generates, they start to all look this, the same. They kind of have the same-ish formats. You can change the colors and the layouts. You can get more creative with it. But generally speaking, when you look at a website these days and you have a lot of experience with vibe coding, you can, you can generally tell right away if a website is vibe coded. Now, I've been getting hit up by a lot of people on LinkedIn trying to sell these new services like, oh, wouldn't it be nice to have all of your Entra ID, Intune, and your, uh, all your other devices, like users, groups, computers, phones, all like very neatly displayed on a page. So we're offering a software that, that plugs in, it's like a software as a service. They're selling it as that, or they're selling it something like that. Like, um, hey, do you, do you want some kind of platform, kind of like SonarCube that scans your Azure DevOps repos for compliance and vulnerabilities and any kind of like secrets or keys that might be able to uh, just kind of not using a variable but just being referenced in plain text. So we have a software for that. And then they try to sell this software and, you, and I check it out and it's all just vibe coded AI slump. And like half of the buttons on the website don't work yet. And it's like, okay, well, you know, they're smoothening it out, but you're kind of just buying into the, the beta and they got a salesperson that sells it all nice, like it works and they got all this support. Whereas in reality, it's just the AI vibe coded software. And you know what? I mean, if it saves money, a lot of these applications are really cheap. You know, they're getting quotes for, you know, maybe only a grand or two grand a year or something like that, which could be really competitive versus real legitimate softwares that go for more than 10 grand a year or even upwards of hundreds, hundreds of grands a year. But, you know, those ones work. The AI soft ones might work. The support might be okay. But as we see, there's the AWS outage Right after that, there was 30,000 layoffs. However, I'm pretty sure a lot of those were not IT related. I think that most of it was warehouse and corporate staff, but right now as I'm speaking, there's an Azure outage. And I know Azure's been laying off a lot of people too. I used to work for a contracting company with, with Microsoft and we, they do a lot of outsourcing, offshoring, and they like to replace a lot of staff with Copilot. They think that Copilot is just going to kind of run the architecture. Here's the thing is that if you're a company and you want cloud infrastructure, you only have three options. You got Amazon, Azure, or Google Cloud. Other than that, nobody, nobody really cares about like DigitalOcean or IBM or Alibaba, maybe like the smaller startup companies or you know, companies that are getting started in other countries and maybe they're like, they don't have enough funding or something, or I don't know, but, so really you only have three options. And then AWS gets outages because of some DNS issue that as far as we know, could have just been some routing configuration that was getting troubleshot or maintenance and maybe some vibe coding thing came in and messed it up. Now we have an Azure outage. We have no idea what's causing this. I have a feeling that AI has got a lot to do with this kind of stuff. So as an engineer in today's landscape and the landscape moving forward, it's really important 
that we start looking into guardrails when it comes to vibe coding. We need to make sure that AI has its own place in our corporations and that humans also have another place in the corporations to guard AI from getting too crazy and too out of hand and taking everything over. Because when it takes everything over, it starts to give security vulnerabilities. It starts to give weird routing and network configurations that might not work. And then in order to fix it, it's going to give a lot more like weird slop and connections that don't really make sense. It might run up costs. It might not be that efficient. There's just a lot of problems that come along with it that require a real engineer who understands the nuances of your specific architecture.